My name is Gary McGeewey, High School Practice Leader for The Leader Me. We're extremely excited to be launching our very first team leadership series entitled Quarantine. This week's episode deals with mental health. Team, take it away. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about mental health, like Mr. McGeewey said, and I think an important way to start this discussion is by asking, what does mental health mean to you when you hear it? Like, how does it affect you when you think when you, when you hear it? Well, to me, mental health is all about, obviously, your brain, um, the way that you think. Um, I feel like mental health really plays into kind of like your whole entire being in a way. Um, you know, what you do starts with your mind. The way that you think affects how you feel. Um, and I think that all plays into your actions and how you treat others and it all, all of those things, um, you know, everything that you do in life, whether that be what you put into the sports you play or how you interact with your family, it all starts with your mental health because um, that's that's what's making the decisions in your life. To kind of just build on what Abby said, uh, mental health, it's kind of an underrated thing that uh, doesn't really get talked about a whole bunch. And uh, it's a lot of, it's a thing that uh, a lot of teenagers, pe people our age, we like, we actually struggle with it. Uh, it's actually like a, a big insecurity of many people, and it's it root everything root from your mental health. You can't be in a and have good healthy relationships without having health uh, a healthy mental healthy mentally, right? You can't treat others the way you want to unless you you're sound in the way you are as a person. So it, everything roots from your own mental health. I feel like people like they they hide their mental health from like their reality. Like they try and be someone else. And that's just like, you have to kind of accept it and then work to make like, just to make yourself happy as the person you are. For sure. I like what everybody was saying. I think mental health is different than some of the other problems that teenagers or young adults or adults, or really anybody struggles with because it's not like a scratch or a broken arm where you might see the band-aid or you might see the cast you know mental health is something that everybody deals with personally and it's it's kind of hidden and so a lot of people do a good job of either hiding their mental state and everything might appear okay or other people might not and so it's important that we t discuss these things whenever you talk about mental health so that people are aware of how to you know build hope within themselves and how to maintain kind of a a happier mindset so that if you have a positive mindset that leads to you know positive actions and that leads to a positive lifestyle and so it really all starts with mental yeah and i definitely agree with that just because um another thing like when you think of mental health you just think of like what state of mind is someone in you know not just happy or sad but you know it's so much deeper than that and you know so pertaining to that and pertaining to what it means to you how do you make sure to put yourself first and how do you make sure to take care of your mental health well i feel like it's so easy especially pre-quarantine to get so involved in like plans and and things and building one thing on top of the next there's <laughs> rosy um but i feel like honestly especially during you know the, the quarantine thing we've been focusing a lot about like rebuilding that schedule and, and, and figuring out the new way of life. And one thing I've learned about mental health um, that I never really thought that I would know is that like in order to have that mental health, you have to give yourself time to breathe. Like you have to allow yourself that time to like recuperate because if you just keep running yourself ragged, you're, you're going to be just like draining yourself and then running off of, of nothing to where you have like nothing left to give. And that's, I think, the root of like letting yourself fall into that to that non um beneficial mental place right i think that um it comes back to really finding finding that balance you know and a lot of people i know like just speaking from personal experience like i know that the times that i've either felt the saddest or the most stressed have been the times where i've stretched myself too thin i've always been someone who's really involved in a lot of things and so whenever I focus too much on the things around me rather than reflecting on how I'm actually feeling myself those those are the times that get the hardest you know and so I think it's really important to find the balance between you know 
your body, your heart, your mind, and your spirit so that you can really just like, you know, like live, live a good life where you do have a healthy mental state and where we can build positive and healthy relationships with those around us. I agree with Brayden, especially like with the whole getting involved and everything. Um, at least for me, I like, I make it a, like a thing that I have to do my best at everything that I do. I not, I don't have to be the best, but like, I want to be like one of the top ones. And a lot of the time, or I put a, so much pressure on myself that I just like break down and then my mom's like, dude, chill, breathe. <laughs> like, it's okay. You like you're still a kid. You're 17 years old. You have like, uh, like 30, not even 30, like 70 more years to live this life. Like, chill. <laughs> so I always have to remind myself to breathe and like, it's okay. You're you're gonna fix it. You're gonna figure it out. You'll be fine. Uh, I think for me personally, method that I use like if something's or trouble in my mind, like I'll literally go get paper and write down what I'm feeling so I can see what I what I'm actually feeling and then have just just to express myself in a certain way whether it be writing a poem or just writing how I feel or even just a journal on like how the day went sometimes I'll write like a, a personal motto that I can always fall back on so that's just something that personally that I do I like to personally write down what I'm feeling what I'm going through so I can actually see it I really like I really like what you just said, Dylan, because I think a lot of the time, like some people like think about how often like someone will say like, "How are you?" or like 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 how are you doing today or whatever, and we just say like like I'm good or like fine, like okay, but, like emotions are obviously a lot deeper than I'm good or fine. You know, like there's so many like words to describe emotion that we don't use like often enough to really like express how we're feeling, and so that's a really like I like that. That's like that's a good way to go about it. All right, and so before we close it up with our uh, last question, I wanted to say like, like as like me personally, I do this thing where I disassociate and it's a bad habit. And that's just whenever I'm super stressed out. And so I'll just completely take myself from the situation, but just really kind of just not shut down, but really just focus on one thing and just completely ignore everything else. Whereas that's not good, you have to assess the situation. So a lot of times I'll have to stop, think about what's going on, you know, recuperate, understand what the problem is and find a solution as opposed to just shutting shutting things out, you know what I mean? But, you know, and that's just how you take care of ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis. But because we're human, we find ourselves getting in tough situations. And so regardless of what we've done to prevent them, Whenever you do get in these tough situations, how do you take care of yourself then? How do you take care of your mental health then when you are, you know, knee deep in something? For me, um, well, like, I, softball is, like, my favorite sport in the world, so I'll go out and, like, hit, or, like, I, I have, I kind of keep my circle, like, really close, so then I'll go out with my friends, and we'll just, like, we'll just go for a drive and talk about life, and after that, especially with my best friend, then I'll feel like 10 times better and I can like recuperate and then figure out everything else from there. I think that it comes back to like making mental health and making self-care a priority and like blocking out time for yourself. Like we were talking about earlier, you can get so caught up in so many different things that sometimes you don't focus really on yourself enough. Um, also, I think that like it comes back to like overhauling toxic thoughts like in your head if that makes any sense like I know like a lot of times like the things you think about will manifest themselves in your life the things like you constantly focus on are going to determine the way you live your life and so you have to really remind yourself and tell yourself like either this isn't true or like or like um whether I think is it like self-affirmations like well I don't know what they're, what they're called but like just um like building up that like the positive ways of thinking yeah, to go off what you said, Brayden, I feel like one way of um, helping combat that, like, constant to having to tell yourself, you know, like, to not believe these things, or, like, if you have these negative thoughts, like, running in your head, whatever 
you know, way of thinking that you have. And there are definitely different forms of like mental health, mental health issues, all of these. So I feel like it's so important to have your support system because like we are made for connection, like human connection. And one way of being able to focus on yourself is to have people that you can, you know, learn from and talk about your problems with. Like you don't have to learn everything on your own, like by yourself. Like we are made to learn from other people. Like, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I can talk to my parents about things and, you know, not everyone's like that fortunate. So I suggest going out, talking to a counselor, talking to a close friend. Um, if you know one of us, if you're here from the podcast, if, you, if anybody knows us, like come out, reach out to us, your peers, but make sure it's someone that you trust. Make sure, um, you know, you're, you have um, the people and you let them know, you know, what's going on, how to deal with things, what should be said and what shouldn't be said. Cause it's totally okay to say like, Hey, I'm going to let you know how my feelings are. I'd rather you not say something about this, this, or this, because it, it could be triggering or it could be this or that or whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, long story short, have your support system there. Yeah. I mean, that really does bring this, this conversation to a really solid end because it's important, like human connection and talking to your friends, it's all really important. So to the audience watching or listening in, reach out to your friends, reach out to your family. If something's going on, talk to someone and make it known that someone can talk to you because just one simple conversation can help so much. So if Mr. McGee, you want to come back? Yeah, so that a very, very powerful ending there. Um, Really, really appreciate your, your wisdom. Um, here's what I was hearing. One thing, uh, the importance of investing in self, uh, making sure that we take time for ourselves, uh, that, that balance, you know, that life balance that many of us are, are striving for. Secondly, I heard the importance of, of really that self-awareness piece, whether it's journaling, reflecting, maybe reconnecting to the personal mission piece. Um, and then the, really the last piece here was really about that strong support system and the power of, you know, we, we, we are made to be connecting with each other and those human connections and we're not alone. And sometimes we may feel like we're alone, but we're not. And, and having that person or persons that you can reach out to. So guys, thanks for, um, for tackling a very uh, important, powerful topic today. Uh, once again, Brilliant as always. Thank you so much, guys, and we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye, everybody.